Who here remembers the sitcom called Father Knows Best? Okay, we're showing our age today, yeah, yeah. Robert Young, Eleanor Donahue, and uh, who's the third one, wait. Jane Wyatt, Jane Wyatt, yes. And, you know, we're here today to celebrate Father's Day, and in that sitcom, it was like he had all the answers. And in my life, I thought my father had all the answers for a very long time, and I was really upset when I found out he didn't. He didn't. He pulled the wool over my eyes. And we all have a story about our fathers, right? My father could fix anything. It turns out my husband can fix anything also. Everything I break, my husband fixes. It's amazing. <laughs> our father is usually about protection and strength and vitality. And it's interesting because Father's Day always comes before the summer solstice. In the summer solstice, we celebrate the sun, the longest day of the year. And the sun is symbolic of the father and the strength and the protection of that, which I thought was very interesting. I never realized that. So, and we always have choices on how we think about our Father. And today I'm going to talk a lot about the Lord's Prayer and about the Father of all of us, right? God the Father. And yes, we use the word Father, but really it's so interesting because I believe God is love, is both masculine and feminine. But in writing this, I realized how much I rely on that still as the masculine and as that God sense within me is the Father. And we always have choices, right? We always have choices on how we see things. And I have a little story here about a man who, his name is Joel, and he spent much of his time in prison. And he was always, he said, whenever my toes hit the floor in the morning, I'm on the lookout. I'm on the lookout for God everywhere. He's now out of prison and he's actually done a lot with his life. He works, um, he volunteers for a place called Homeboy Industries. It's a gang intervention rehabilitation. And we get to look at God as either we have a choice. We can look at God as somebody who judges us, which is the way that I was raised, or we get to see God as the one who notices and delights in us, which is the God that I believe in today. But I want to tell you a little bit more about this gentleman. Um, half of his life had been spent in jails and detention facilities. And before coming to this particular um, organization, he was a meth addict and it crippled him, surely, for much of his early gang alliance did. And they were speaking in his office and he, the man is now married and has children. But while he was growing up, he was taken away from his parents because they were so violent and there was a lot of uh, beating and everything. And they were, he was put with his grandmother, who was also very mean to him. And it says here, every day after school, every weekend and all summer long for the entire year, Anthony and his twin lived with her and they were forced to strip down, sit in this lonely hallway and not move. She would duct tape their mouths because she said, I hate the sound of your voices. Yeah. Then Anthony quakes as the emotion of this memory reverberates. And he said, this is why, holding his finger to his mouth, he says, I never shush my girls. He pauses and restores what he needs to continue. I love the sound of their voices. In fact, when the oldest one grabs a crayon and draws wildly on the living room wall, and my wife says, do something. Aren't you going to tell her something? And he said, he crouched down. He put his arm around his daughter. And the two of us stared at the wall, my cheek resting on hers. And I point out and say, now that's the most magnificent work of art I have ever seen. That gives me goosebumps. You know, we have the choice of being the victim and continuing that pattern or changing it. And he chose to change it, exactly. There are many of us that choose to change it. So I, for one, first of all, the Our Father. That's what I used to call it. I never called it the Lord's Prayer. Growing up, it was the Our Father. When I heard the Lord's Prayer, I was like, what prayer is that? <laughs> oh, you mean the Our Father. And before I said the Our Father, this was such a fascinating talk for me to do the research on. But before I said the, the Our Father, we always did the sign of the cross, which was the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. 
And what I found out in looking deeper into this was, you know, when you say the my um, name in the name of the Father, okay, that uh, that's the upper three chakras that they're talking about. Like it's from here up. The name of the Son. It's in the heart. It's where the soul lives. It's where the sun is the manifestation of us as human beings. And the Holy Spirit is the communication between the Father and the Son in our place here on earth. And after I did this, I'm like, I have to do a whole talk on the Trinity because it was so fascinating. I, this morning I was like reading more about it. I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna change my whole talk and do it on the Trinity. And I'm like, wait, I can't do that. But it was just such an, a great, um, realization to see it in a different way because again it was one of those things I just did not acknowledging what it was and also when I was a licensed unity teacher I realized I used to say the our father like I was an auctioneer our father who art in heaven hallowed be the name thy kingdom come thy will done on earth as it is in heaven give us stay our daily bread forgive us trespasses we forget those trespass against us amen I didn't even say the last part because that's kind of new and when I was as a licensed unity teacher and I realized that I really wasn't acknowledging what this prayer was, because prayer is supposed to change our consciousness, right? This prayer, when I said it like that, was not changing anything. It was just like, I got it done, right? <laughs> and when I tried to slow it down, I couldn't even think of the words. I was like, oh my God, what is the next word? So for a long time, I would say these words before I went to sleep at night and I would say them really slowly. And when I picked out the name of this, talk, I didn't pick it out, it picked me out and I told Sean about it and he put it down and that was like six months ago. And when it came up, I was like, oh, okay, I gotta do the, the Lord's Prayer. And just to start out, you may already know this, but Jesus said he was giving us an example of how to pray. This wasn't the prayer to end all prayers. He was just giving us an example. And nowhere in this prayer does Jesus beseech God for anything right? It's not about asking God for anything. It's about aligning ourselves with God so that we can experience what it is that we desire, what the God within us knows is ours already. But it's about helping us get to that vibration. And it's clear that prayer is not something we do to God, but something we do to ourselves to let that God has already done. He expressed in and come to fruition through us. The purpose of prayer is to seek oneness with God, not to make God one with us. If it doesn't change our consciousness, it's really not prayer. Now let's go through the prayer. Our Father, this is the true beginning, and it declares unity with God at the onset, which is man's greatest need and it's not trying to get God's attention, but directing our attention to that which loves us in an everlasting way. Just sit with that. <clears throat> that love is in us. We forget it. I forget it all the time. But that love is here, and it's mine to remember and to love myself that way. And as I love myself, I can love others that way. It also speaks to the relationship between God and man or human, which is father and child, cause and effect. It cuts off any possibility of deity. As offspring of God, we too have divine spirit in us. We are divine. And the truth is, that each and every one of us, those of us here, those of us there on Facebook, those of us in the world, anybody saying this prayer, and then others who don't say this prayer, are our family. We are all related. That's what those two words say, our Father. Who art in heaven. Remember that Jesus said, for the kingdom of God is within you. So heaven is within us. For years, I saw heaven as someplace out of me where God lived, right? Well, I don't believe that anymore, but sometimes I still catch myself thinking like heaven is outside of me, thinking like heaven is a place I want to go, forgetting that heaven is right here within me. And it's always there. We simply ignore it. We forget to look and to listen for it. 
Both God and heaven are within us, and we have to remember to access it. Psychologists say that we um, repress our emotions. I think we also repress our good. And I think prayer is what's supposed to remind us of what our good is. No good can put, I'm sorry, no prayer can put good into a purpose. No good can put good, oh my goodness gracious, no prayer can put good in a person. The purpose of prayer is to provide a proper climate for the encouragement and development of techniques to stir up and release the gift of God that is already in us. The nature of God to be in heaven and man to be on earth because God is cause and man is manifestation. Those are two parts of the Trinity, right? The cause and the manifestation. God is infinite and perfect cause of all things. Cause has to be expressed and God expressed himself by means of man. That's a fact. By means of all of us. All of us are individual lights of God. That's what that candle represents. The Christ consciousness that is within each and every one of us. No matter what we look like. No matter what we do. No matter how bad we are. God still loves us. God still delights in hearing our voice. God still delights in seeing us. Man's destiny is to express God in many glorious ways. And that's what's going to be heaven on earth, right? When we're all doing that. When we're all doing what we came here to do, right? Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed is derived from the name, from the same Anglo-Saxon word that was given as holy, heal, and hold. It implies the wholeness and omnipresence of God. The same fountain cannot spout sweet and bitter water. A rose cannot produce a lily. Everything that follows from God has hallowed and perfect also. So we too are hallowed and perfect. We too are whole and holy. It's our nature to be altogether good. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Each man is a perfect idea in the infinite mind of God. The decree is, let that perfect idea, what I am in spirit, unfold in me and through me. Let the divine will lead me into an outer manifestation of that which I am within. So let that goodness come out. Let me shine my light as the goodness that God wants me to express here. God individualizes in an infinite number of people. It is our duty to be continually occupied in helping to establish the kingdom of God here on earth. I'm going to read that one again because I forget all the time. It is our duty to be continually occupied in helping to establish the kingdom of God here on earth. When we find our true place, we will bring the kingdom of God to manifestation. Thy kingdom come. And God's will, we get to know through prayer and silence, being still and meditating. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, Jesus always spoke in stories and parables and symbolism. So, our daily bread wasn't just what we ate, which is what I always thought, which is why I thought I loved bread so much my whole life, right? I used to think, well, it's because of the prayer. I love bread. It had nothing to do with the olive oil and the cheese and everything else I put on it, but... This is not asking God for supply, which would be like the fish asking the ocean for water. It's not asking for our daily meals. It is simply an affirmation that God is substance. It is claiming our inheritance. With all our freedom, we, we haven't claimed our inheritance. When we think we're in lack, when we think we need something that we don't have, we haven't claimed our inheritance. We haven't asked, because as soon as we ask, it is given. And then we pray and allow ourselves to see what it is that's already ours, that's already here. The will of God is that we lead happy, healthy, prosperous, joyful, Free lives. Daily bread includes everything that we need to do that. 
We must claim them, and God alone is the source for all of them. Our daily bread signifies the realization of the presence of God in us already. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. This indicates the working of the cosmic law of cause and effect. Give and receive, forgive and be forgiven. God doesn't need to forgive by any special act because God is love. God cannot forgive, actually, because there can be nothing but love in God. Love is the power of washing away any transgressions, so through love man can forgive and render evil into good. We are often bound by inner conflicts, which are pools of unforgiveness, and we need healing. Release and you are released. Love and you are loved. Love your enemies, not because they deserve to be loved, but because you require and I require the continuity of that flow of love. When you are expressing less than love, you are cutting off the flow of the dynamic energy of life. Push the love button and the divine action moves into cleanse and release. There was a smart doctor who said to his patient, every ailment can be cured with love. And the patient said, well, what if it doesn't? He said, give another dose of love. Sin is separation from God, missing the mark. Love is the bullseye. When we believe we are separate from God and others, we create pain and suffering. We must forgive others and self. To not forgive self is spiritual pride. If prayers are not answered, seek to see who you must forgive. And all you need to do is be willing. Ask for the willingness to forgive. First, if, you're not, if you don't feel like you're willing, ask for the willingness first. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is a misleading and totally erroneous translation of the original words. God would never lead man into temptation. Light cannot lead you into darkness. It's simply affirming that the urge of expression of our potential is so great that it will never leave us comfortless in trial. It will never abandon us in confusion or in temptation. And it will indeed always be the very power of help and healing and deliverance. The prayer is telling us that God will not fail or forsake us because there is a spirit in man and the Almighty which gives understanding. That's what we have. It's always there. As we evolve, we become more sensitive. We can also have spiritual pride, which means we lapse into a condition of superiority and self-righteousness. Great knowledge brings great responsibility. We must not fall asleep feeling superior to others or to become self-righteous. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So the first seven parts of the prayer, seven is completion. This part was added afterwards. It's added for the liturgical purposes. It is a suitable closing that encourages humility in suggesting that God is our power to achieve and our glory of accomplishment. And the final amen doesn't mean I hope it will be. It means it is so. It is done. Now there's another version of the Our Father. We're actually going to hear three. This is that was the first one. The second one is kind of similar, but a little bit different. Our Father who art in heaven. That's one clause, right? I am now conscious of the infinite and the eternal presence in whom I love and by which I think and create. Hallowed be thy name. This presence in me is whole and complete. It is actively health that heals, of intelligence that inspires of substance that prospers, and of love that harmonizes. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. I am God's glorious possibility, and I now let his perfect idea of me unfold in me and through me. My desire for betterment is God's desire to perfect that which he is expressing as me, and I intend to let him have his way, seeing myself as doing that which he sees me as being. 
it all sounds so easy, doesn't it? <laughs> As I'm sitting here reading it, it's like, wow. It's, and it all sounds so big, but that's where we're here to be, is big and bright and beautiful and love. When we see little babies, right, that are just born, I see love. All I want to do is hug this baby in love. Every baby is just a ball of love. It's what happens as we get older that we can tend to take on doing bad things, right? After that story I read to you. Or we could decide not to do those bad things and do something completely opposite. But sometimes we have to go through stuff. We have to go through life to realize, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be this. Give us our daily bread. I have no existence outside of God's presence, for I am that presence expressing as me. Therefore, I can never be separated from all sufficient substance of opulent universe. I claim my divine inheritance and I daily, perpetually manifest abundant supply. So affirming. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. The presence of love in me is my potential for dissolving all conflicts of transgression. The presence is love, and it loves in me and through me as love. It forgives in me and through me as I forgive. It releases me as I loosen and let go of all my limited thoughts about myself and others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The presence in me is my light and my deliverance. There is no darkness in the light and there can be no darkness in me when I am established in spiritual unity with the presence within me, which is better than light and safer than the known way. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. And all that I seek to be or do or have, I humbly recognize that in the presence is my own power to think my very aspirations, my will to commence, my strength to keep on, my power to achieve, and the glory of my accomplishment. This is the truth. This is what sets us free. So be it. And the final version of the Lord's Prayer is what I saw in, and I'm actually going to read this, the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. Jesus said, Pray like this according to what you find in your heart. Father, let me know you. Let your kingdom dawn upon my mind that I may be led by your will and become as one with it. Let me hear your word within my mind. Let my lessons be given me that I may be closer to you through the actions in my day. Let me forgive myself as I know you have. Let me see my brothers as innocents, as they truly are. Let us watch our minds for evil thoughts that would trick and blind us to the light within. Let us let those thoughts go so that they may not cloud our minds for knowing the truth. Amen. That was Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. And this is saying, from our light within, we will see and be the light. Remember our purpose in all things and follow the guidance that comes from within. Now, in January, I claim that the year of 2023 was going to be about Psalm 23. So every month I try and pick a part. And this just jumped right out at me. It was so clear. And the part that says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because thou art with me. God is right here with me. The Father God, Mother God, I am God is right here with me, always. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. God is the Father and is always with me. So to summarize, our Father does know best. But once again, our Father is not outside of us. That love that represents our Father is cause and can always be found within when we stop and look for it. The Lord's prayers are our guide, and when said consciously, it changes us, not God. We are the ones that need to get into alignment 
with all the good that God has already wanted for us. Happy, joyous, free, prosperous. There is no asking or beseeching in the prayer. It's statements of truth. So go within and listen to what Father God, Mother God, Christ consciousness has to say to you. You will see. Father knows best. So thank you. I'm your sister in prayer, possibility, and power. I see you. I appreciate you. I love you. Until we meet again, remember you are blessed and you are always a blessing. Amen.